The Phantom Train It was a beautiful night, and the moon was shining bright, illuminating the sky with its soft light. For friends had been planning a night trip for weeks, and finally, the night had arrived. They had decided to board an old train that was famous for its scenic route, and they were excited to see the beautiful sights that lay ahead under the stars. The train station was bustling with people, all eager to get on the train. The four friends, Alex, Emily, Jake, and Lily, made their way to the platform where the train was waiting. As they stepped on board, they were struck by the old world charm of the train. The wooden seats, the brass fittings, and the intricate details on the walls made it feel like they had stepped back in time. As they settled into their seats, the train slowly started to move. The wheels creaked and groaned, and the train chugged along the tracks, picking up speed as it left the station. The friends looked out of the window, admiring the stunning scenery that lay ahead. They chatted excitedly, making plans for the day ahead. But as the train picked up speed, strange things started to happen. The lights flickered, and the temperature dropped suddenly. The friends looked around, puzzled, but then they heard it a faint whispering sound that seemed to be coming from all around them. Suddenly, the train started to shake violently, and the friends were thrown from their seats. They clung to the edges of their seats, trying to steady themselves as the train hurtled forward, faster and faster. It was then that they saw them, the ghosts of the train's past passengers. The ghosts were transparent, and they glided through the train, their eyes fixed on the friends. They looked sad and scared, as if they were trapped in some kind of purgatory. The friends were terrified, and they knew that they had to find a way to escape. They tried to open the doors, but they were stuck fast. The windows were too small to climb through, and the emergency brake didn't seem to be working. The train was hurtling towards an unknown destination, and the friends had no idea what lay ahead. As the train continued to speed along, the ghosts started to get more aggressive. They would whisper in the friends' ears, making them feel like they were going crazy. They would touch them, sending shivers down their spines. They were determined to keep the friends trapped on the train forever. Alex, who was the most level-headed of the group, started to come up with a plan. He suggested that they split up and search the train for anything that could help them escape. Emily and Lily agreed, but Jake was too scared to move. He sat frozen in his seat, his eyes wide with fear. The three friends split up, each searching a different carriage. Emily went to the front of the train, Lily went to the back, and Alex stayed in the middle. As they searched, they found nothing but old newspapers, empty bottles, and discarded food wrappers. It was then that they heard it a faint humming sound that seemed to be coming from beneath the train. They followed the sound, and eventually, they came to a small hatch in the floor. Alex opened it, and they peered inside. There, hidden beneath the train, was a small room. It was dark and musty, and there was an old suitcase sitting in the corner. The friends opened the suitcase, and inside, they found an old map of the train's route. They studied it closely trying to figure out where the train was heading. As they studied the map, they realized that the train was heading towards a deserted town that was rumored to be cursed. Legend had it legend had it that anyone who entered the town never returned. It was said that the town was cursed by a vengeful spirit, and that those who dared to enter would suffer a terrible fate. The friends knew that they had to find a way to stop the train before it reached the cursed town. They hurried back to Jake, who was still frozen in his seat. They told him about the map, and he finally found the courage to move. Together, they made their way back through the train, dodging the ghosts as they went. As they reached the front of the train, they found the conductor's room. Inside, they found an old lever that controlled the brakes. Alex pulled the lever, but nothing happened. The train was still hurtling forward, faster and faster. Just then, the ghosts appeared in the room, their eyes fixed on the friends. They looked angrier now, as if they were determined to keep the friends on the train forever. The friends backed away, but there was nowhere to go. The ghosts were closing in. Suddenly, Emily had an idea. She remembered something that her grandfather had told her about ghosts, that they were often bound to a specific object or place. She looked around the room, searching for something that could be causing the ghosts to haunt the train. That was when she saw it, an old ticket stub lying on the ground. 
she picked it up and examined it closely. It was dated from decades ago, and it had the name of a woman on it, a woman who had died on the train. Emily showed the ticket stub to the ghosts, and they seemed to calm down. They looked at the ticket, then at the friends, and then they disappeared, leaving the room empty once more. The friends looked at each other, relieved that the ghosts were gone. But they knew that they still had to find a way to stop the train before it reached the cursed town. As they searched the room, they found an old radio. Alex turned it on, hoping to find some kind of help. But all he heard was static, and then a faint voice. It was a woman's voice, and she was singing an old song that the friends had never heard before. The song was haunting, and it seemed to echo through the train. The friends listened closely, trying to make out the words. And then, they realized what the song was about. It was a warning, a warning about the cursed town. The woman's voice sang of a terrible fate that awaited those who dared to enter the town. She sang of a vengeful spirit who had cursed the town, and who would never rest until all who entered were dead. The friends knew that they had to stop the train before it was too late. They searched the room, hoping to find some kind of emergency brake. And then, they saw it a small lever hidden behind a panel. Alex pulled the lever, and the train shuddered to a stop. The wheels screeched on the tracks, and the friends were thrown forward. But they were safe, for now. They stepped out of the train, and they saw that they were in the middle of a deserted field. The cursed town was nowhere in sight. They looked at each other, relieved that they had escaped the train. But as they turned to walk away, they heard it, the sound of the train starting up again. They looked back, and they saw that the train was moving, slowly at first, but then picking up speed. The friends ran towards the train, hoping to stop it once more. But it was too late. The train disappeared into the distance, and the friends were left standing alone in the field. They looked at each other, wondering what would happen next. As the friends stood in the field, they heard a woman's voice calling out to them. It was faint at first, but it grew louder and more frantic with each passing second. The friends looked around, trying to locate the source of the voice. And then, they saw her, a terrified woman stumbling towards them from the distance. As the woman drew closer, the friends could see that she was covered in dirt and blood. Her clothes were torn and her hair was matted with sweat. She looked as if she had been running for hours. The woman collapsed at the feet of the friends, gasping for air. They rushed to her side, trying to help her up. But the woman was too weak. She clutched at their clothes, tears streaming down her face. She told them that she had been on the same train, the phantom train, and that she had seen things that no human should ever see. She told them that the train was cursed, and that its passengers were doomed to suffer a terrible fate. The friends listened in horror as the woman described the ghosts that haunted the train, the same ghosts that they had seen for themselves. She told them of a vengeful spirit who had cursed the train, and who would stop at nothing to keep its passengers trapped forever. The woman's story sent shivers down the friends' spines. They knew that they had been lucky to escape the train when they did. But they also knew that there were others who might not be so lucky. They decided to help the woman, to get her to safety and to find out more about the cursed town. They asked her what she knew, and she told them everything she could remember. She told them that the town had been cursed by a powerful witch, who had been betrayed by the people of the town. The witch had sworn revenge, and had cursed the town to eternal darkness. The friends listened in horror as the woman described the cursed town. She told them of the twisted trees that lined the streets, of the dead-eyed inhabitants who roamed the town, and of the vengeful spirit who ruled over all. The woman begged the friends to help her escape the town, to find a way to break the curse and to put an end to the witch's reign of terror. The friends knew that it was a dangerous task, but they also knew that they couldn't turn their backs on someone in need. They set out towards the town, determined to find a way to break the curse and to save the woman. As they walked, they saw the twisted trees in the distance, their branches reaching towards the sky like gnarled fingers. The town was silent and still, as if it were holding its breath. The friends walked cautiously, watching for any sign of danger. And then, they heard it, the sound of footsteps approaching from behind. They turned to face the noise, their hearts racing. But what they saw was even more terrifying than they could have ever imagined. 
there, standing before them, was a figure unlike any they had ever seen. It was a tall, shadowy creature, with glowing red eyes and a mouth full of sharp teeth. It hissed at the friends, its body coiling and uncoiling like a snake. The friends stood frozen, unsure of what to do. The creature lunged towards them, its claws outstretched. But then, something miraculous happened. A bright light appeared, blinding the creature and causing it to retreat. The light faded, revealing a figure standing before the friends. It was the woman they had rescued from the train, and she was holding a crystal that glowed with a bright, white light. The woman explained that the crystal was the key to breaking the curse, and that they needed to find the witch's lair to use it. The friends followed the woman as she led them through the twisted streets of the cursed town. They could feel the eyes of the dead-eyed inhabitants watching them, but they pressed on, determined to break the curse and save the woman. As they walked, they heard the sound of chanting coming from a nearby building. They approached cautiously, peeking through the windows to see a group of hooded figures gathered around a large cauldron. The friends recognized the witch at the center of the group, a twisted, old woman with eyes as black as coal. They knew that she was the one responsible for the curse, and that they needed to stop her. With the crystal in hand, the friends burst into the room, surprising the witch and her followers. The witch hissed at them, calling upon her dark magic to stop them. But the friends were not afraid. They had each other, and they had the crystal. Together, they channeled their power into the crystal, causing it to glow brighter and brighter until it was blindingly bright. The witch shrieked in terror, realizing that her curse was about to be broken. But it was too late. The crystal exploded with a burst of light, and the curse was lifted from the town. The twisted trees straightened up, the dead-eyed inhabitants regained their humanity, and the town was bathed in sunlight once again. The friends cheered in triumph, having saved the town and the woman they had rescued. They were heroes, and they knew that they had made a difference in the world. As they walked away from the town, they could feel a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment. They had faced their fears and had come out victorious. And as they boarded a new train, one that was not haunted by the ghosts of its past passengers, they knew that they would never forget their harrowing experience. But they also knew that they would always have each other to lean on, and that they could face anything as long as they were together.